Care for some tea? Welcome to Stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regas, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. Summer is almost here, and one of my favorite asterisms will be making its appearance in the early evening sky next month. That's right, James. The teapot will be gracing the southern sky. And if you're a night owl, you can get a preview of it next week. What are we talking about? Let's show you. Okay, we have our sky set for shortly after midnight any night next week, facing southeast. Near the horizon, you'll see the stars of Sagittarius the Centaur Archer. He's just to the east of the J-shaped constellation of Scorpius the Scorpion. Many of the stars of Sagittarius are too faint to see from most cities. However, there are eight stars here that are fairly bright and they form what we call an asterism. Kind of like the Big Dipper in Ursa Major and the Sickle in Leo the Lion. Therefore, the teapot in Sagittarius is not an official constellation. Nevertheless, it's a fun pattern to spot, and with a little imagination, you can enjoy watching it cruise across the sky to pour tea on the tail of Scorpius the Scorpion. The stars Caus Media, Al Nazal, and Caus Australis make the spout. Caus Media, Caus Borealis, and Phi Sagittarii make the lid. Caus Media, Phi Sagittarii, Escala, and Caus Australis make the body of the teapot. And Phi Sagittarii, Acella, Tau Sagittarii, and Nunki make the handle. Finally, if you have super dark skies and a good imagination, the Milky Way looks like steam coming out the spout of the teapot. No way. Yes way. As legend has it, Scorpius the Scorpion wanted to show off his brand new teapot by having a tea party. This is a legend? Well, okay, it's kind of a story I made up. But scorpions don't drink tea. Just play along, it'll be fun. Okay, if you say so. So anyway, Scorpius invited Orion the Hunter and his two hunting dogs, Canis Major and Canis Minor, to his tea party. Unfortunately for Scorpius, he forgot that those constellations are in the winter part of the sky. So by the time they arrived, the sky had rotated so far that all the tea poured out of the teapot, leaving only the steam behind. So what do you think? Uh, you know, you don't put tea in a teapot. You actually boil water in a teapot and you use that water to make tea in a separate cup with a tea bag. Uh, maybe it's a magic teapot? On that note, let's see what the planets are doing. Okay. We have our skies set for midnight anytime next week. Since you're up looking for Sagittarius, you're in for a treat. The largest planets in our solar system are both in the sky at that time. Directly above Sagittarius is a yellowish, non-twinkling light. That is the ring planet Saturn, and it's getting closer and closer to us, reaching opposition on Thursday, June 15th. The next few weeks will be great for viewing Saturn, because when Saturn is near opposition, it's opposite the sun in the sky. This is also when the planet is at its closest to Earth, and it appears bigger and brighter than it will all year. If Jupiter is your favorite planet, look toward the southwest in the constellation Virgo the Maiden. Jupiter will be the bright, non-twinkling light near the star Spica. If you have a small telescope, you should check out both Jupiter and Saturn. Saturn sports a collection of bright rings, and they're tilted toward the Earth right now, making Saturn even easier to see and Jupiter will be accompanied by its four largest moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. If you can, look at Jupiter each night through a telescope for three or four nights in a row. You'll see Jupiter's moons changing position every night as they orbit the giant planet. So there you have it, two planets to dazzle the midnight hours. And make the stars your own while you imagine sipping tea from a magical celestial teapot. It's all part of the wonder when you keep looking, looking up. Thank you.